The purpose of a stablecoin is to track the price of some other asset, most commonly the US dollar. They are cryptocurrencies, just like any other cryptocurrency, but the central authority that issues them deliberately and explicitly manipulates the market to maintain a specific price. A type of cryptocurrency pegged to a commodity or traditional currency to ensure stability. Every Tether token ever created can be tracked and traced on the blockchain. Tether created its first product, Tether USDT, a US dollar on the blockchain. More recently, Tether added EURT and CNHT, respectively Euro and offshore Chinese Yuan on the blockchain. The company continued to innovate and created its Tether Gold offering, a digital asset pegged to physical gold. Most stablecoins claim to be backed by other assets, which they can use to settle redemption requests or trade with market participants to maintain the price peg. This isn't a very unusual model. National central banks of many countries also try to maintain a peg with the US dollar. The most popular stablecoins are Tether and Circle, both of which are Ethereum ERC20 tokens, which means transactions live on the Ethereum blockchain. Personally, I've always found the concept of a stablecoin slightly less offensive than other cryptocurrencies. Ignoring other things like energy consumption for a moment and focusing only on use cases, they are ostensibly backed by something and could in theory serve a purpose. USDC in particular is trying to strike deals to become more embedded in the traditional banking system infrastructure. If companies want to invest in experimental new technologies because they believe it has the potential to reduce costs, provide new useful capabilities, enable them to integrate with the fledgling Web3 ecosystem, or even just as a PR stunt to attract young engineering talent, more power to them. Stablecoins are, in some ways, similar to a money market fund, but money market funds are regulated, audited, and much more transparent. Look at the Fidelity SPAXX fund for an example. They publish a detailed list of all assets owned by the fund. Compare that with the typical Tether attestation, which is just a fancy way of saying, trust me, bro. Tether is the original and most controversial of the stablecoins. It was launched in July 2014 as Realcoin, then rebranded to Tether a few months later. It's owned by the same people who own Bitfinex, a shady offshore crypto exchange headquartered in the British Virgin Islands. They didn't want to disclose that relationship, but it was leaked in the Paradise Papers and confirmed by the New York Attorney General in their recent investigation. They concluded, our investigation has determined that the operators of the Bitfinex trading platform, who also control the Tether virtual currency, have engaged in a cover-up to hide the apparent loss of $850 million of commingled client and corporate funds. They then proceeded to ban Tether from ever doing business in New York. Other jurisdictions soon followed, like Ontario, Canada. They are reportedly also still under investigation by the Department of Justice for bank fraud. Tether used to claim every USDT is backed by an actual US dollar in their reserves, then slowly walked away from that claim. Today, they just claim to be backed by reserves without being too specific. Here is the real truth about Tether. The irrefutable truth is that Tether tokens are 100% backed by Tether reserves. They claim to have almost $80 billion in their reserves, much of it commercial paper making them one of the largest holders of commercial paper in the world. But nobody who trades in that market has heard of them or seen them participate. There has been speculation they lend money to their own partners in private transactions. There has also been speculation they invest heavily in Chinese commercial paper, which has been in a free fall lately, especially the real estate sector. Is any commercial paper held in Chinese companies? Stu, you want to take uh, this one? Yeah, absolutely. Deirdre, our portfolio contains international commercial paper. Nobody really knows where the money is or whether it even exists at all. Tether CEO J.L. Vanderveld and CFO Giancarlo Devesini are both MIA, missing in action. They deleted their Twitter accounts and disappeared. Nobody has seen or heard from them publicly in a long time. Instead, they send out their disciples, General Counsel Stuart Hogner and CTO Paulo Arduino, to defend the company. You may have heard of these two characters. Stewart is a former director at the parent company of Ultimate Bet, a gambling app that built a god mode for their employees to cheat. And Paolo is often called upon by Bitcoin maxis to pump the market by printing more tether. They have been promising an audit for years, literally years. 
If you ask Stuart or Paulo if they are doing an audit, the answer is always yes. If you ask them when it will be done, the answer is always in a few months. Follow up on the audit to go back a tiny little bit. I know that you said you would be thrilled to be the first sort of crypto company and stablecoin to go through an audit. Do you have a date in mind? We don't at this time, no. But we are reaching back uh, a couple of years for the financial audit, and that is in process. Okay, do you think that's years away, months away? Any months, clues? not years. Only months away? Yes, we think so. Okay, great. Well, I hope you'll you'll bring it to us, and uh, we'd, we'd love to see it. Um, I'm sure I you'll hear about it. <laughs> they reportedly did actually try to get audited once, but ended up canceling the contract with the auditors when they were unable to deceive them basically. At the same time, they weren't your first pick. You guys were working with a New York-based accountant, Friedman LLP. What happened there? Why did you move away from them? In your statement, you said that given the excruciatingly detailed procedures Friedman was undertaking for the relatively simple balance sheet of Tether, it became clear that an audit would be unattainable in a reasonable time frame. A lot has changed in a few years. That is that information is a few years old, Deidre. You're you're exactly right. You've hit it square in terms of the fact that we had a relationship with Friedman LLP. The auditors wanted too much information, and Tether didn't want to play ball. The opaqueness of Tether and suspicions they are manipulating the Bitcoin market have been repeatedly cited as the cause of many proposed Bitcoin ETFs being rejected by the SEC. For its part. USDC recently announced they will be 100% backed by cash and short-term U.S. treasuries, but they also only provide attestations, not audits. So why do we need stablecoins at all? Because most cryptocurrencies are so volatile, they are actually useless as currencies. Ironically, people want to use dollars to manage risk and provide liquidity for trades between cryptos, but they don't want to interact with the traditional or legal banking system because it would be too slow getting in and out. Also, it would require them to identify themselves and do unsavory things like pay taxes. So stablecoins are a convenient middle ground, theoretically as stable as dollars, so useful as currency, but not dollars, so no need to follow laws or regulations. I've always found it suspicious how they rarely seem to have a declining market cap. If you look at normal investment funds, they go through cycles where the flow is mostly inbound or mostly outbound, but Tether just always seems to be going up. It is possible to redeem Tether's $4, but it's quite a complicated process that also requires people to identify themselves, which, obviously, their clientele is not keen to do. But that allows Tether to claim they have never been unable to meet a redemption request without specifying how many requests they have actually received or for what amounts. At this point, you're probably wondering who in their right mind would hold USDT. Over two-thirds of all Tether minted across multiple years went to just two crypto companies, Alameda Research and Cumberland Global, both large secretive market makers, i.e. institutional traders. Let's see if we can try to follow the life of a Tether. Some of this is a bit speculative because we don't really know exactly what's going on over there, but let's try to figure it out. Tether mints one USDT, then sends it to Alameda Research in exchange for one US dollar. There are rumors they actually sell them at a discount for less than one dollar, or maybe just mint them out of thin air backed by nothing. We don't really know. Assuming they get something for it, Tether invests in commercial paper, the profits from which supposedly fund its business. Alameda sends the Tether token to exchanges like FTX or Binance. Alameda buys and sells Bitcoin and Ethereum with the Tether and tries to skim small amounts off the spread of bids and asks. For example, somebody wants to sell one Bitcoin for 39,990 Tether. Someone else wants to buy one Bitcoin with 40,000 Tether. They buy it from the first guy, sell it to the second guy, and keep the difference, also referred to as providing liquidity. We really don't know what order flow data Alameda is able to get from the exchanges. Sometimes this market making activity can appear indistinguishable from front running, which is supposed to be illegal, but is quite common, even in the stock market. But if Tether is responsible for pumping the Bitcoin price, how exactly does it work? I don't know who Alameda is trading with. If they are buying Bitcoin with a flood of unbacked Tethers, somebody must be taking the other side of that trade. Maybe they trade back and forth with themselves in one exchange to drive up the price, then dump some assets in another and call it arbitrage. The lack of regulations and transparency here really makes this whole thing a giant black box. 
We know the newly minted tokens go to Alameda, Cumberland, and other market makers. We know they get transferred to exchanges. But after all their trades are executed, who is actually hodling USDT? It's a bit of a mystery. Whoever it is, they rarely send them back to Tether's known treasury addresses, and they rarely get removed from circulation. So either they are incapable of selling them because nobody wants them, or they believe they are backed and Tether is good for the money. Or maybe they're black market operators and don't mind taking a risk of massive haircut because the alternative is shipping bags of cash around the world. It's just all very suspicious, and if everything was on the up and up, there is no good reason they can't do a proper audit and put these doubts to bed.